Hi everyone, welcome back to this uh, channel, zani4e.com. Uh, again, I would like to share about energy payment system. Uh, this also, I would like to address you know, uh, some uh, question being asked to me uh, about what are the major challenges okay, I face okay, in helping companies to develop energy payment system based on the ISO 2001 requirement. Okay. So uh it's actually uh there are quite uh, many challenges, okay. Uh despite uh I having so much experience okay in this uh, particular so-called services. Uh but uh to me every client often giving me new challenges, okay, in different ways, but uh at the same time. It gives me the opportunity to improve, okay, on my services delivery. So means that you know I learn from this client, so that I can help my next client better because the input that you know the challenges I face, okay, and then after we manage to resolve the challenges, we can use that experience, okay, and new know-how and knowledge to make sure that the next client uh, will get some kind of better delivery, so that we can avoid some potential. A problem that they may have to face, you know. So, uh, it's a lot of challenges. But uh, in this part, in the video, I would like to share. I managed to put some notes. Okay, <laughs> I managed to put some notes on what are these challenges. Okay, uh, number one. Okay, the first uh, challenge that I often face, right? Uh, during the start. Okay, during the uh, uh initial stage of the system development, basically. Uh, the challenge is uh, how to get you know uh, each party involved in the system okay because to develop the system it must be done by involving uh, quite numbers of parties in the company for example normally the lead uh, team normally from facility or from the technical but they cannot develop the system without uh, so called you know uh, somehow inputs, you know, corporations, data, information from departments such as productions, okay, procurement, okay, even uh, human resource, okay, and then the design team, the technical team, okay, even the top management. So the challenge is always, okay, how to get, all right, uh, everyone, whoever, whoever, you know, being uh, assigned to be involved in this development to understand. Okay, the system requirement. For example, if data management, what are the uh, in the requirement of the system that they they have to play their role? They must indicate. They must demonstrate their role. Okay, for example, for the top management, they must uh, understand their role is more on the uh, clause basically clause five. Okay, clause five and also uh and under clause nine on the performance evaluation for the management review and all that. Okay, and clause uh. Uh, uh, five more on the leadership, okay. Leadership, all right. So, uh, so that's the first one, <laughs> okay. To get everyone, whoever, uh, all parties involved in the development and understand the system requirement and what roles you know they are involved in the system, okay. So, this is how to do this, <laughs> okay. Uh, of course, somehow along the way, I managed to find a way how to overcome that. That's but, but. Uh, so start that, that that is always the 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 challenge to get everyone understand because normally what happen okay the company want to get certified right so the management expect you know all be, be be done by this particular department so I assign your department you are the lead now do it get it done get get it certified okay but they often you know uh, some of them they are aware about their role but the the role must be clearly defined must be explained to them okay must be explained to them so that they can. Do their part. That will help a lot, especially especially the top management. Okay, if top management understand the rules, okay, it's easier for whoever in charge to uh, spread that you know uh, the the requirement, the messages to get everything done. That okay, number one. Number 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 two. Okay, this related to the understanding of the system and how. Okay, uh, okay. Once they understand the require uh, the the rules, okay. The, the, the second challenge basically uh the communication and you know, how they can communicate okay 
uh, among the key personnel, okay, from this department to the next department for the other department during the data and information gathering. Okay, because in the energy management system development, there are a lot of energy related data. Some are direct energy data, for example, energy consumption data, okay, the bill and all that, but some are not direct. For example, you know, they have to collect data on the production, they have to collect data on the maybe the rejects values, they may have, they have to collect data on the some the operating parameters, they have to collect data on the equipment, the asset list, okay, on the equipment, the rated power, and all that. Okay, because the party that being somehow the one that keeping the data, they may ask, what is the data for? So why should I give it to you? This looks like you know it's nothing to do with energy. Why are you asking it now? Some data are direct. For example, data on energy consumption, they know it, no problem. You go to the uh, so-called administration, okay, you can get the bill directly. But some data on the production. For example, they have to sometimes they have to put data on the different products. The production team may ask, why should why should you ask this kind of information? This is production data, nothing to do with energy. Sometimes. All right, this is often the challenge. Okay, how to communicate that. Okay, uh, that's why uh, over, over time there's always the challenge because normally there's a lot of time you know being wasted because of the internal issue you know just to get the data from different department. But somehow along the way, I managed to find a way how to overcome that. <laughs> okay, and then the third one, the second challenge, uh, the third or the third, the, the, the third challenge basically is to talk to the relevant department. Okay. Uh, to confirm, okay, the availability of the those data. Sometimes the data is there, okay, but they never put it in such a way in a proper proper order. Okay, so that to get them to get the data to put the proper order, all right. Uh, to check first to check do they, do they have the data or not? Some they blindly say no, we don't have it. But somehow we know this they have it, but they never been collected properly. Okay, that's why right. confirming the ability of the data is not an issue, it's not a challenge. For example, uh, I may ask, right? Uh, what kind of uh, data you measures you measured for your equipment? Okay, they mention some data offhand. But when I go for the site visits, they collected more than that. That's why right. I always, whenever I ask them the answer, the, my question. Okay, I have to go direct to the site to see what exactly data available for them that have been collected. Okay, that's the third challenge. Okay, confirming the availability of the, uh, confirming the ability and the collection of the uh, data, energy related data. Some, again, some are direct data related to energy, easy to understand, but some are not. Especially when I would like to collect the data on the potential energy variables. Okay, they, they, are, they always, you know, new data to be collected, new data to be gathered if they have collected before. That number uh, three, confirming the availability, okay, and the collection of the energy related data. Okay, the fourth one, uh, this is not a challenge. This was often involved the uh, operation and maintenance of the major energy user system or equipment. Okay, uh, normally the challenge, okay, and how, okay, uh, some factory, some uh, facility, some building, they are doing it. They are collecting. They are. They are uh, collecting some uh, data on the operating parameters of the equipment. For example, temperature and all that. Okay, pressure and all that. They are co collecting that. For me, if I came across that kind of situation, things will be easier because what I need to do, you just need to help them to establish the criteria for the efficient control. But if they need some factory, they are they are running, they are operate and maintain just to make sure no 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 breakdown or no shutdown, no interruption to the production. They don't collect data. <laughs> okay, they don't collect that. There's no schedule a regular data collection on any of the key operating parameters of the equipment. For example, for the boiler, for the chiller, for the air compressor, they don't collect the data. They just collect data whenever needed according to case to case basis. Okay, the challenge is how we can sit down with them, 
From now on, if you want to adopt the system, engineering system, you must start to collect this data. So it means that additional job to them. <laughs> okay, it's not easy. Uh, somehow, you know, somehow uh, along the way, I managed to find a way how to overcome that. So offer the and then we have to explain to them, all right, and then to introduce, introduce what, how to, how uh, some method, how they should uh, control these parameters. Okay, why they need to start to collect this data? You know, have to explain what benefit in all that because they they will be if they have never done it properly, there's additional task to them. So this is why it's very delicate situation normally. Okay, I have to really nicely explain to them, sit down with them, get them understand, and then they can somehow start to do that through my uh so called you know uh, guides and facilitation. Okay, uh, because after we they agree somehow, I need to help them to establish the criteria on how they can control this. What are parameters they should keep? What kind of range they should keep in this particular uh, equipment to make sure they can uh, to ensure a more energy efficient operation and maintenance of the equipment. That's a challenge <laughs> because they may involve some new things to them. Some changes in their normal day-to-day -day routines. Okay, that's number four. Okay, and then number five. Okay, this I often found it is a challenge as well. Is to integrate the energy efficiency criteria in the design and procurement processes of the company. Some they do have consider they do consider energy efficiency in their design of the equipment. Anything that affect energy consumption, they do have that, but not properly documented, not properly structured. Normally, case to case basis. Okay, uh, okay, similar to the procurement, they do consider that, but case to case basis. Okay, the challenge is that how they can embed the criteria in the from the design stage. Okay, until they can, uh, followed by the procurement process, how to insert the criteria in the current practice. Okay, that's why normally I have to sit down with these two team, technical who do the design team, uh, do, do all the, the technical team who do the design, also the procurement team who are doing the procurement. How we can link these two processes to make sure they meet the standard requirement. Not easy, eh? especially when they involve procurement. Eh? Uh, it's not easy, but it's not about changing their current process. It's about adding some element that to meet the standard requirement. It's often not easy as well. But the risk of this, okay, if I don't send the right message, okay, they may totally refuse that. Okay, I have to take more time to get them instead. So normally, uh, the, the, the concern is that you know, uh, they may have no choice. They may have no choice. You have to, you know, uh, have to uh, stick to that, you know. Uh, that's why it's important for them to exactly, uh, for me to exactly, to explain to them exactly the requirement of our standard. Some are not uh, that so-called what they somehow assume. Okay, that's not easy, yeah? okay, to, in, in, to, in, to integrate the criteria and give the criteria in the current uh, design and procurement processes. But I came across quite number, uh, some companies, they are doing it. They are doing that. They have their own uh, design criteria that consider energy efficiency. Okay? If that kind of company, it will be much, much easier. It's not case-to-case. -case they have uh, some kind of document to refer as a guide for everyone. But most cases, okay, they do it on case-to-case -case basis. They are doing it, but case-to-case. -case. But for me, if you adopt the system, they must be done in a, uh, through the proper uh, uh, so-called guide in the SOP or the work instruction. Okay. And then the last one, you know, the, the last challenges, okay, the last challenge I often face, okay, okay, is to ensure, all right, the personnel that operate and maintain the, uh, the, the uh, equipment that are classified under SU are well trained or competent enough. They have enough knowledge, sufficient knowledge to uh, uh, for them to be aware about the impact of 
uh, inefficient operation and maintenance of the equipment. Because normally training or firm being attended by engineers. But these people, these personnel that operate and maintain, okay, this, this equipment normally they are either maybe uh, supervisors level, technicians level who are directly day to day is on and off the equipment, do the all the troubleshooting and all that. They are the one, even they are the one who are collecting the data, okay, uh, somehow monitoring data from day to day basis of the equipment. So what I often found, right? Uh, how to make sure uh, the company all right, uh, have a proper uh, somehow uh, plan to make sure these pers personnel are well trained and so that they have enough some kind of you know, competency in operating and maintaining the equipment to ensure energy, uh, more energy efficient, opera uh, energy efficient operation and maintenance of the equipment. So these are some challenges okay, I face okay, not only by me, Okay, actually not by me, okay, by companies, okay, that want to develop and implement energy memory system according to the standard. Basically, I'm telling you some tips in developing your system. Okay, but somehow uh, there are several ways of uh, overcoming these challenges. I think throughout my experience, all right, uh, normally uh, I managed to somehow address this issue uh, individually, one by one, each of them one by one, because they always involve a lot of uh, some kind of you know, uh, consultations, you know, facilitation, guiding session, you know that uh, throughout the consultancy period of uh, as part of the services. Okay, uh, I will I will deliver for them you know, as a consultant. That's why you know, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> okay, uh, of course you know nothing is easy, but somehow that's why you know. Uh, based on my experience, I couldn't help anyone. Okay, uh, develop a system uh, to to bypass certain process. You know, at least so far my experience. At least I need you know from scratch. If you're talking about from scratch, okay, from zero until certified, at least you know six to eight months, at least, no shortcut. <laughs> okay, okay, because the biggest challenge of engineering system is not about to get certified. Okay, but all is about to get the system uh, works. Okay, because the, the biggest challenge, you know, in the, when it comes to the audit, not during the first certification audit, that will be during the first surveillance audit. Okay, especially if you came across the auditor that has the energy management practices experience like me. <laughs> okay, somehow. Uh, okay, but normally they look at that because the, the, the spirit of LGM system based on the ISO 2001, you must be able to demonstrate your energy performance improvement. Okay, how through the data that you process, okay, that you translate into all the uh, all the baseline indicator and how you monitor each of it, you know, uh, from time to time to see the progress of your performance improvement. Okay, if you cannot show your performance improvement in the system, okay, uh, I would say it would be uh, difficult, more difficult for you to show that to your management of the benefit of the system. Okay, so that's why I hope by sharing the challenges just now, I hope you are more aware about that. Okay, I think you should be able to equip yourself more with the, the right knowledge, the right information to overcome those challenges. Okay, with that, thank you very much for watching this video. Okay, and then I hope to see you again in the next video. And then stay energy efficient and stay healthy. Okay, thank you very much.